Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about CrowdStrike. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, hi Frederick, the global IT outage caused by Microsoft's CrowdStrike incidents would prove in my opinion that software developers are incompetent. Should tech companies be allowed to withhold salaries and penalize their past and present employees? Well, I would say that this is a bit of a tricky one because you I mean, of course, being a software developer and this channel being mostly for, I assume now, software developers, not exclusively because I haven't really made any requirements on that, right? So we're just talking about code. So whether or not you are a software developer or not, I think that we can all agree that holding the software developers directly responsible or like basically referring to them as incompetent is at like a pretty big generalization I would say that but the thing that most people would probably expect me to say is that well of course not like that's uh, you know being a software developer that um, I mean I can't identify with being incompetent and surely I don't want to feel be responsible for these sorts of things and so forth but I want to say this and that is that I believe personally that software developers needs to have a certain level of accountability similar to how let's say for, and this is not just the software developers themselves it's the company as well because this, that's the problem with, with your statement because basically what you're saying is well in your the way you formalize this it would basically put you in the best possible position as a company because basically that means that anything that goes wrong in theory you can blame on your employees and so you can legally shift from being per, like being at a company level responsible for the outcomes of a project to just saying that an individual is responsible as you probably know that's a very popular move when companies especially at the higher levels get into trouble where they instead of being trialed as an organization they just point the finger at a CEO or something like that so you you can chop off one person and then the company survives and kind of gets through the whole thing right and this is a similar sort of setup where you you reap the benefits as an organization and the profits and stuff like that but as soon as there's any liability you can move that to an individual instead which means that the whole thing continues and then your CEO goes on TV and makes a bunch of excuses and promises and so forth and so forth. You pay a fine and then you move on with your day. So what I think though is that there is something that I believe is a little bit necessary and that is very very tricky to do and I'll tell you why, why I believe so. The thing I think is needed is to build in a little bit of accountability in the software development process. Just as for example, we have certain requirements and it's not like it's not there a hundred percent, it's just not as present as for the medical companies. So an analogy I like to make to my software developers is when, and because I, I've, d I've done this so many times now guys that it, it just never ends. Every single time I get asked to take over a team or like start joining uh, some group of developers where things are not going so well, I always find the same thing. And that is that there are no tests, as an example. This is an easy one, but it's the classic one. There are no tests. And so I ask them, okay, let's start adding some tests. These are the basics of quality for us in our industry, right? And so the first thing that they will do, most of them, is that they will start feeling stressed or complain over the fact that now that's going to take longer, at least the ones that aren't so effective at writing tests. And so what I tell them is that, well, you see, the thing is, is that you have been skipping tests, but you have been expected to do to write them all along. It's just that you have ignored doing it. And to me, that is exactly the same thing as why we have laws for, and regulation for how the pharmaceutical companies are allowed to push out drugs to people and how much testing they have to go through and all these processes that we have created as a society to safeguard the consumer from bad drugs. We have the exact same thing for builders, doctors, 
and while not always lawyers and so forth, but I hope you see my point. There are certain restrictions and requirements put on the craftsman or the supplier of the dr drugs or whatever you have, right, to meet before they are allowed to say that we are done. That is non-existent, more or less, in the software developer world. IT has practically no accountability for like whatever they do, which is, I think, really, really bad. I think it's super bad. And I argue that at least I'm not going to go as far as to say that we need laws or stuff for, like that for that because I can't really. It, it would be the same th same thing to me at the very least, and as to try to put a law in place for basically anything that has to do with the creative field. Like we don't have laws for authors or mathematicians to do good math and things like that. It's very very tricky to create a law that would sort of cover the problems that we have here because and I can tell you all uh, right away from experience that it's not the first time someone has told me oh yeah Frederick we should add all of these quality checks like we should enforce testing and I say yeah it's a really good start but that doesn't necessarily mean that your software developers are gonna write better code or that they're gonna stop being incompetent and so people ask me why like why, why how can we make sure that they are writing good code and I say you can't basically you can put all the restrictions you can put all the requirements on them but fundamentally I even if I say and the software developers who have been through this a few times can hopefully agree even if I say that you should be writing tests to ensure that things like these gigantic outages and stuff like that or so forth as you can imagine it's not just down to testing but it's one piece of the puzzle even if I ask you to do that that doesn't mean that you're writing good tests it is exactly the same thing as me saying that well you you should build a really good building and then I put a bunch of requirements of how, what things you have to check off your list in order to be allowed to build that building if you have people who are nefarious or you know things like that they are still gonna produce that building if they're incompetent they're still gonna produce that building but there might be a million other things that are, is not per se covered by a law or a rule or whatever that will still fail in our world as you can imagine if I say we should have a hundred percent test coverage well you can get a hundred percent test coverage without writing a single useful test it's very very easy if you really try and that's the problem here like basically how how do you create a rule for people basically being required to be competent in any given situation so what I want you to take away from this is that I do agree that some accountability should be should be applied to the IT industry uh, to IT in general but not at a necessarily only at a personal level I think that the model that would suit us better is out there that is applied for different industries such as like you know how we can hold say a politician accountable for corruption or a, a business owner for embezzlement or things like that we can hold an individual accountable for their actions if as long as we can agree on some practices that should be applicable to people in a legal context when they are a craftsman or like a public servant or whatever so we can hold someone accountable in, in a legal fashion and the same thing has to be true for the business because as I said it's re like when the chips are down people all people are always going to play the victim as much as humanly possible and unless you have as I said some requirements on people to fulfill accountability usually goes to the side it's not something that people are going to prioritize out of the kindness of, uh, of their heart some people will because some people and some organizations are generally interested in always you know doing business above board not doing anything nefarious or morally dis discussable or like uh, ambiguous and so those are models that you know th those are examples of things working really really well but the rules and the regulations of the accountability and all that stuff is necessary for the cases when you don't have that and that's the problem basically even if you create all these laws or regulations or you hold people accountable and so forth and so forth it's really tricky that's why the law books are massively thick to create a set of rules that just basically boils down to the same thing make sure that everybody is acting in good faith doing things that are 
honorable and like just and so forth and so forth under all circumstances and of course they have to do all of that while acting with perfect competence without making any mistakes or you know dangerous mistakes and so forth in any given circumstance that is really really tricky so I don't believe that you just arbitrarily say that a tech company should be able to blame software developers for being incompetent. I think that there should be requirements on things that software developers should fulfill in order to, you know, because if you write really, really shitty software and you just don't give a fuck, I think you should be held accountable for that. How we figure it out if that is happening or not, that's a different story for sure. And the same thing should be applicable to the IT companies because bad software and these outages, I can tell you right now, the CrowdStrike outage did not just happen because there are a bunch of incompetent software developers somewhere. There's a lot of people involved in something that big happening and it's really tricky to just put it on one person or one or the other person. That's why I argue, as I said, we as a society should treat this a little bit like a big building just collapsing for no reason. People should be held accountable, but it's never as easy as just saying the builders did it or the, le the, the le like the materials were inferior or so forth and so forth. You have to investigate these things and really know what parts are reasonable to expect from each player in such a catastrophe. Have a great day.